Hello friend and welcome or welcome back to the better side of YouTube. Today I will be showing you how to use the API Master Freshwater Test Kit. And I know that my video won't be mirrored, so the letters are going to be backwards for you. But in a moment it will not because I will be using the front facing camera. At first I thought maybe I'd sit down, have kind of a little professional setup where I'd just be sitting and explaining to you how to use it. But I know that a lot of us, including myself, are visual learners. So I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna do a whole demonstration for you. I'm going to use it on my 10 gallon tank and I'm just gonna show you how to use it. One thing that I would like to say before I jump in, this kit comes with a little instruction booklet, which can be found in the front. And it is actually the label of the box. It's this little booklet that just rests inside. Read it. It will save you. I know sometimes instructions may not be necessary for certain products, but it is in my case. Uh, let me give you a little quick backstory that I do find kind of humorous now that I've gotten past the stage of embarrassment. So when I got the kit, I I had it. I, and I used to have it because when I was little I had a tank, but I didn't really maintain it, my dad did, so I didn't really know a whole lot about uh, the test kit itself. It's not super complex, but there were some things that I needed to figure out, which I could only figure out by reading the instructions. So essentially I didn't read the instructions and I got out the bottles and I didn't use them properly. And so I thought that it was broken. <laughs> And I'll explain that in a minute in a little more depth. But I emailed the company and I told them that I thought that their kit was broken. And when I tell you they actually wrote me back and asked me, have you read the instructions? I've never been more embarrassed in my entire life. You being here and you watching this video is going to help you avoid all of that. So you know what, let's just go ahead and hop right in. Here is the test kit in all of its glory. As soon as you pop the lid off, I want you to grab the instructions. Don't throw it away after reading it because not only is it the cover for your test kit, which I do believe looks nicer than not having it, on the back, this is your chart. The corresponding colors on this list are going to tell you how much of each level is in your water. So let's lay that aside just for a moment. Now, this did not come with the kit, but I do recommend you getting something like this. And if you don't wanna spend the extra money, all you have to do is grab a little small bottle you have laying around. This is just going to make filling these little vials a whole lot easier. So in the kit, you will have four of these. I'm gonna go ahead and lay those out. I love how Alexander is watching me right now. You see him back there? <laughs> oh, he's too cute, I love him. All right, now that you have all of your little vials, you're gonna grab the lids. The lids are actually important and you will need to use these. So you have four vials and four lids. After that, go ahead and grab each bottle out and then you can put this aside if you want to, just kind of have it on standby. So let's quickly go over each of these bottles and what they mean. This bottle is going to test the ammonia in your water and you actually have two bottles, which is where my earlier explanation comes in. So you will notice that ammonia has bottle number one and two. Most of them only have one bottle. The nitrate and the ammonia both have two bottles. My error occurred when I only used one of these when dropping it into the vial, nothing happened. So if you notice this is bottle one and bottle two, I obviously thought that, you know, since you have to add 10 drops of this bottle, it would be used up more quickly. I just kind of assumed that they gave you a second bottle since you would probably use this more often because as you can see, some of them only have you add five drops. Well, this one has you drop 10. So I thought, oh, how nice they gave me a second bottle. So I only used one. You were supposed to use them at the same time. Yes, 10, but 10 drops of this bottle and 10 drops of bottle number two into the same vial. That is how you get the right reading. For your beta tank, you will want to use the high range pH solution. You could use this pH, but high range is typically what you're going to want to use because most beta tanks are going to rest around this area. So if you wanna go ahead and use this first, you can find out where on this scale you are. And then if it starts to exceed a little bit beyond this, you can use this to test and then see if it is in a higher range than just the first one. So typically you want the pH for your beta tank to rest around 7.4. I just recommend for the sake of staying organized, group them, put them together. 
And there you go. Your four bottles that you're going to use. Each will have an assigned vial and cap. A lot of people will just take the vial itself, dip it in the tank, and fill it up to this little five milliliter line right there. You don't want to fill it beyond that with your tank water, so always make sure the tank water reaches here. But a lot of people will just dip it in and then the vial's all wet and everything. It's you know, it's it's not hard, but it's not absolutely ideal, which is where your little container comes in. Just fill it up. You can stick it underneath, fill it with water, and you probably won't use all of it, but whatever you don't use, just pour it back in the tank. Okay, now we have the water and a little bit of duckweed, which has decided to hitch a ride. <laughs> little quick side note on duckweed. Yeah, this stuff grows like crazy, and... I used to not be so great with floating plants, but now that I am, I found that duckweed really does grow really fast and you can't get rid of it. Go ahead and use your bottle and just pour it in there until it reaches the five milliliter mark. It goes a little bit beyond that. I mean, it's not gonna hurt you. Just to make it go extremely far beyond that mark. I will go ahead and just fill all of these up. All right, now all of the little vials are full. You can work right to left, left to right, doesn't really matter, but I like to work right to left. So first on the list, nitrates, and you can set this aside I recommend setting it over here, right there. So you need two bottles for the nitrates. I'm going to grab this vial here and we're going to put exactly 10 drops in there of each bottle. All you have to do is cap it. Make sure it's on tight. It takes you a second to kind of wiggle it on there. But you want this to be all the way on because you do not want this color liquid to go all over your desk, or your countertop, or wherever you're testing. And then shake it. You don't have to shake it a lot. I mean, it'll get combined pretty quickly. And then leave it. Set this to the side. Set it on your table. And so that you don't get any of the vials mixed up, I always set it down right there in front. I'm gonna set that right there above the nitrate. Alrighty, I'm going to let these sit here just for a little bit and we'll come back within one to two minutes. Already most of these are going to read the right results, but the instructions say to leave it for, actually, honestly, I don't even know. <laughs> I didn't read the instructions. Maybe now would be a good time. It says to wait five minutes for the color to develop, so we'll just do that. All right, it's been five minutes and I am so happy to say that all my perimeters are looking just perfect. I do wanna walk you through the levels really quickly just so that you know what you want to be looking for. Nitrates, my nitrates are close to zero ppm. They might be in between zero and five and this is completely okay. Your nitrates can go up to about 20 ppm, that is fine. Nitrates are really one of the only levels that are fine to have more. However, if you have a lot of plants like I do and a lot of little and a lot of house plants in your tank as well, they will actually feed on the nitrates. So usually in a thriving um, aquarium, especially if you have plants in there, live plants, your nitrates should never be very high. If they are, let's say it's reading around five to 10, you're okay, you really don't have to do an emergency water change, it's all right. But if you feel uncomfortable with it, you can always do a partial water change, maybe 20 to 30%. My nitrites are at zero parts per meter. You always want these to be at zero parts per meter. You don't want them to get even 2.25 parts, always at zero. If it starts to climb a little bit, water change. And then retest to make sure it's back down to normal. The ammonia, again, is zero parts per meter. You don't want any ammonia in your tank either. That will cause a lot of stress to your betta and can cause him to get sick as well. And it looks like my pH is possibly around 7.4. And it looks like it's 7.4. If I tested it with the lower range pH, it's possible that I am at 7.6 but my guess is that I'm probably more around 7.4. So that's good. That's what you want to see in your beta tank. All right, friend, I hope you found this helpful. If you have any more questions, stick those in the comments and I would be glad to answer them for you. I will have a link to this test kit in my description. The test kit is a little more on the expensive side. Typically on Amazon, you'll see it go for about $35, but in pet stores, usually 
it's a little more expensive than that. So buying online is going to save you the most money, but it is definitely something worth investing in. This thing lasts forever. So even if you are paying a little more than you would pay for something like some test strips, it's gonna last you a whole lot longer, a whole lot longer. I mean, this this lasts forever. This could last you several years. If you are new here and just haven't heard yet, I would love to invite you to my private Facebook group, The Betta Fish Forum. It's a great place for betta fish parents such as yourself to talk and learn from each other. And it is a wonderful, friendly environment where no bullying is allowed. I hope you and your betta have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.